Test, test. Is this thing on? Oh, 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 hey! Sit down and shut up, maggots. I mean, uh, uh, hi, and welcome to Flight School Course 099, Potential and Current Pilots. So, this course is intended to familiarize you with all sorts of things that go on outside the cockpit before you even begin flight. And if you found this from my YouTube page, you might want to go ahead and go follow that link in the description and go back to the forum so you can see all the text that goes along with the video. Without further ado, you should already know who I am, the one and only, the zine. I'm so humble, right? I know. Anyways, let's get started. So, as with the other videos, I'm not going to read all of the text. I will simply go through the exercises with you so you can see what I'm doing. And you will note that I am not in game right now. Well, I don't want to be, because I want to go and show you putting ships in, in your hangar. So, what you need to do is be logged in to your RSI account. And you go to my hangar and at the top you will see your hangar selection along with all sorts of things that you have purchased from here you can click the configuration button which will enable you to select whatever hangers you have available you may only have one available um, currently there are these four in the game and this button right here reinitialize I'll go ahead and click that you'll see that it removes all ships that were currently placed in the hangar and put them back in my available ship list so in order to assign a ship to a hangar simply drag and drop and there it is okay so that will be in the central bay of my uh, VFG industrial hangar something important to note is if you were to take this ship and put it way out in this outer bay then you would have access to the central area which connects to the left side area which goes to the left outer bay and then you can kind of tour around and see some more of your hangar if you wanted to but it's just going to be a bunch of empty space uh, if you don't have any other ships in there just a long walk to go check your stuff out anyways after you've assigned your ships to where you want them uh, go ahead and click save and now your hangar is set up that ship will be visible in the hangar um, please note that not all ships are hangar ready and some that are hangar ready might not necessarily be flight ready so some ships like uh, let's see let's see what I've got on my account no I can't see it from here let's go back to this hangar page some ships like the RSI Orion are in concept state and they are not even modeled you can't look at them in your hangar at all let alone fly them some other ships you can put it in your hangar, look at it, walk in it, open the doors, check it out, but you can't take it out to fly yet. So there's flight worthy ships, there's hangar ships, and then there's concept only ships. So be aware of those. So I assigned my ship, my hangar, everything's set up. I can go ahead and click launch and I will cut this part out so you don't have to sit here and wait for the load screen. Alright, I'm back movie magic skip the whole loading process you can see there's a 350 yard down in the central bay uh, after having cleared out everything in this hangar which the only thing I had in there is this one ship that I own that is flight worthy aside from a loaner but you can't assign loaner ships to your hangar slots and see them that way you can only access them from the holo table to equip them and fly them some of them so talk a little bit more about that later uh, what I want to get to right now section 2.2 the menu so very important to know how to access the menu and change different options in the game. Pretty simple. Press escape, bam, go to the menu page. I want you to check out the options menu right here. You'll see there's game settings. Um, a lot of people like this one right here and a lot of people are having a lot of, uh, let's just say fuss for a nice word, on the forums about using uh, lead indicators instead of lag pips. Well, I don't like lead indicators like the lag pips, and I leave all this default. Graphics, uh, I run it at a pretty good setting. I've got a pretty good computer. You might need to tone some of this down or might do it automatically depending on what you've got. If you notice any graphical problems, low frame rate, uh, go ahead and turn some of that down. 
Audio, highly recommend you drop your music volume way down low. This makes it so much easier to hear game sounds and balance out sounds with third-party communications like Ventrilo, TeamSpeak, Mumble, whatever. Um, control options. There's only one thing I mess with in here, depending on how you like to fly and play. If you're using a joystick, mouse, keyboard, maybe you want to check out some of the other options. The most important thing in here that I mess with is master sensitivity. Um, usually like at about a point two, right there. I believe the default after a clean install or deleting your user folder or a patch, your master sensitivity gets set to 0 0.16, which is a little bit low when you're flying in relative mode, mouse and keyboard. Can't quite turn as fast as you need to. You can aim really well at things that aren't moving quick, but you can't move quick enough to shoot at things that are, so catch 22. You have to find a nice balance between uh, speed of maneuverability and aiming and ability to aim accurately. Okay, so that's important. Audio is important, and this is really important. Here's your default key mapping page. You can scroll over and check the layouts for joystick and gamepad. Um, more importantly, down here at the bottom right, advanced controls customization. This maybe is a little buggy, so sometimes when you wheel, it stops scrolling through the list. But here, like that, here is where you can set uh, whatever button you want to perform whatever function. So there are a few changes I make. Um, look behind, I believe was previously bound to period. I like that on the middle mouse button because I, I don't have a thumb that reaches 10 inches across the keyboard to hit period whenever I need to look behind me for who's chasing me, shooting at me, missiles coming, whatever. So I like that on middle mouse button 3. Um, I don't like pressing middle mouse button 3 for missile locks because it can be kind of tricky hitting that down and then rolling your finger off the wheel or whatever. So instead I use mouse button 4 for missile locks, which I'll scroll down here and find that somewhere. Did I pass it up? No. Here we go. So uh, launch missile is mouse button 4 and lock missile is mouse button 4. And the way that works is a single tap, clicky will assign a missile to a target and if you want to put more than one hey tap it a couple of times if you want to fire your missiles you have to wait till you have a hard lock and then click and hold it down for half a second or so and then your missiles will pop off and start chasing your target assuming you have a good angle of approach with your missiles so uh, since I moved missiles to mouse button 4. I put weapon groups 3 on mouse button 5 and you see fire group 4. Well, there isn't a fire group 4 yet, but that's also on mouse button 5. So that'll be nice when you can have so many different weapons groupings, but for now I only ever use 1 and 2. So it's important to know those and one other thing. Um, let's see, that's a very important keybind right there. Vertical focus V. That's in another course. If I can find it. Here we go. Match target velocity. Normally this is on M. Uh, again, it's kind of like having the period all the way over there. I don't like trying to reach for that. I know where the V is. I mean, I'm so used to control X, C, and V for cut, copy, and paste, and whatever. And it's right there under my thumb in a natural hand position anyways. So match target velocity will attempt to keep you at about 600 meters from your target and move you at the same exact speed as them downside is if you're under 600 meters using match target velocity will make you go to zero meters per second so you're a sitting duck you don't move so it's I don't like the way the AI works on that that's what it tries to do I haven't played around with it recently so maybe it's changed uh, you can check that one out for yourself but what I like to use this for is if I'm closing in on somebody hmm, works better in Vandal Swarm than versus players because typically you're maxed out on total versus players and you want to move so you don't get hit but in Vandal Swarm you can approach a target, shoot it, it goes on tilt, he starts trying to evade, whatever. You want to match his speed so you don't ram him or overshoot him or whatever. So you double tap V to match velocity, and then instead of letting AI manage your throttle from there, just hit W or S to bump your throttle up or down just a little bit, and that'll disengage the auto throttle and just drop you to whatever the uh, match speed was when you tried to match. So if you need 50% throttle at that moment when you tried to match and you bump it up to 51, it'll stay at 51. It won't scale up and down based on distance and how the enemy or your target changes. So those are a few really important keybinds that 
I think are worth changing. Uh, rear view camera, match target velocity, missile lock, and then because of the missile lock, the uh, weapons grouping. Alright, so going on to section 2.3, you need to be familiar with the hangar and where important things are. So like I said earlier, this is the industrial hangar. Here is my main elevator. Well, excuse me, this is not the main elevator. This is the elevator to the main command room, which eh, mostly just have flare items in here for now. Who knows, maybe certain other functions will be done from this area. Nothing for now. Um, what do I have in here? Oh yes, I have my little Herald snow globe thing. Pew pew lasers. There we go. Now the explosions started rendering properly. All these fancy computer screens, just artwork and they don't do anything. Hmm. Control room up there, might be some nifty things in your kind of central area of whatever hangar you're using in the future. Um, this is really important, we'll get back to it, that's the hollow table. And not too long ago, uh, they were introducing a little bit of the room system and showing off how they're going to attach different modules to your hangar. So this door previously was not uh, able to be open, and it's automatic. You just walk up to it and it opens like a little shopping mall door or whatever. So you come in here, and then this will be the elevator that leads you to planet side or a station or wherever you might be docked at and that's going to be really important to know in the future but as you can see the doors don't respond because there is no place to exit to okay back to the all-important hollow table which includes section 2.3 moving on to the hollow table itself in 2.4 so you located it you see this use icon pops up in the middle of your screen in order to interact you press F and that pops up the hollow table. If you're standing at the wrong angle, you won't be able to see things very well. Or if you're standing too close and you try to do this and you unlock for UI mode, you can't grab things. So you need to be standing at the right distance for uh, proper usage of the hollow table. So you hit the tab key, that pops your mouse out. You're no longer controlling your character. Or you're in UI mode instead. You can grab any of these models on the right. Um, so when you open the hollow table you're in default the ships panel you can look at paints which I don't have any and apply that to either your gray cat buggies if you own one or possibly ships in the future or most definitely ships in the future so what I'm going to look at is my 350R drag and drop him in the middle I scroll over to weapons let's see let's grab this you can grab the model with the right mouse click and rotate it all around so you have an easier view of things kinda nifty um, let's see. So I'm on weapons. What do I want to do? I don't like that nose gun there. Um, that's actually the sucker punch that is mounted to the size 1 fixed mount of the loner cutlass. So I mounted the mount, and this weapon is associated with that mount. So when I start the game with my 350R, it has that weapon on the nose. I don't want that. I want this sledge 2 mass driver on my nose. So I put that on there. Okay, my weapons are set. I want those laser cannons on the sides, I want these missile launchers. Now I need to load ammo. The mass driver is technically a hybrid weapon that uses energy to propel a slug or projectile, so it needs ammo. It should also need energy, but currently does not. Um, you need to load missiles onto your missile racks, so just drag and drop those, fill up those bubbles. Bam, okay, I got my equipment loaded, missile racks loaded. Let's see, my power plant's right up in there. I don't want to mess with that. My shield generator is right here. So this is a store purchase shield generator, which I'll probably get credit back for when they introduce the REC system. Talk more about that later. Uh, this is the default shield generator. And you'll see how extremely tiny it is. So I mentioned in here that at some point uh, it may be difficult to uh, drag and drop to replace this on that other shield generator on the default one because it's really hard to see under this huge bulky item so it's 
better if you go in here, grab this guy, pull him off, and you'll see the hard point sphere, or the attach point sphere, for whatever item category you're looking at. So I won't see the shield attach point when I'm not looking at the shield menu. So I can go ahead and put that on there. Check out my engines, now they're lit up. Hey, those are cool. And I've even got the maneuvering thrusters on here too, somewhere. I don't think you see them from this page, which you're probably supposed to be able to. You can't. I think you see them from the ship page. Yeah, see the pop up now, which, hey, it's an alpha. There's lots of things to work on. Okay, so my ship is loaded out. I want to get out of this hollow table. I hit tab to return to normal mode, get out of UI mode, hit F to close the hollow table and save all those changes, and I'm good to go. Um, these changes will persist as long as your client is launched and active. If you exit the game, crash, or for any reason your client is closed, you have to come back to the hollow table and refit your ship because it'll revert back to a default setting. So here's that gun that I put on the front. Here's that shield generator I was playing with in the hollow table. Yeah, missile racks, lasers on the side. Can pop open this ladder real quick. I'm supposed to use it and climb up, but I find it's quicker to just run at it and do like that and kind of glitch my way up the ship. I can come check out that these missiles are indeed loaded on the rack now, which before was just empty space. It's kind of cool. Alright. So, section 2.5, not much to go over here. Um, but the only thing you can really do is familiarize yourself with the different types of equipment and maybe go take a look at the VD store um, to get an idea of what the rental equipment credit system and purchasing things might look like. So the store is located uh, out here at the website. So store, Voyager Direct, and you can purchase flare items, you can purchase like these posters and junk, I think, here we go, you can purchase skins, and you can also purchase, well, if you're not rich and don't want to spend money on silly things, which hey, if you do, fine, go for it. But if you're not rich like me, you're only interested in things that uh, give you some bang for your buck. So you look at weapons, shields, um, these shields were really released. Um, I'll talk about these later and right now because I'm here, so I might as well do it now. So you'll see these guys, uh, these mark shields are more resistant to directional weapons, so any type of lasers or ballistics. And these splash shields are more resistant to explosive weapons, so we're talking missiles and they come in different sizes so there's size one through four I believe available in both the mark and the splash type and then there's also missile racks there's ballistic cannons laser cannons ballistic repeaters laser repeaters and all kinds of different missiles with different lock-on systems all for another course not for this one okay so going back to the hangar moving on to section 2.6 the contact list so, you want to stalk somebody? <laughs> Here's how you do it. So, um, you're in the hangar. Contact list is only accessible from the hangar or from the RSI website. It's a lot easier to do in-game, though. Press L. Opens up your contact list, and you can see I've got quite a few people in here already. You'll notice that some of them have a little green dot next to them that stands out and pretty easily indicates that player is online. It's not necessarily guaranteed, though. Um, there's some bugs associated with that. I'll go over those later. So here, you can open the contact list by pressing L. You click on this bar down at the bottom, and you can type in, let's say, my name, for example, and then click Add. Well, you can't add yourself as a contact. Haha, <laughs> silly. Go away. All right, I'm done. Let's say you were you, and you added me, and it worked just fine. You've got your cursor down here after hitting Add. Well you try to hit L, it's not going to work to close the menu because you're still typing. So you need to click on the hangar space anywhere out here, get your cursor focus shifted away from this box, and then hit L, and you're good to go. Oh, and one more thing. At the top here, if you click this, um, this enables you to remove contacts from your list. Okay. Done with the contact list. Cool. Uh, section 2.7 about arena commander game modes. There's really not a whole lot I can tell you about that outside the manual. Not much for in the way of tips, tricks, do's and don'ts, things to avoid or well, they're becoming less and less now that the game is uh, being developed more and more. So there's still a few things that you have to avoid doing. 
otherwise you'll end up with crashes and reloading your game and other bugs which brings me to section 2.8 resetting errors now if you're not a veteran player you might not necessarily know that something is going wrong it could be going horribly wrong and you just don't know any better so you're putting up with it like I don't know you load into a match and your weapons aren't charging properly you're not putting out power you can't shoot you don't get shield you don't get radar or whatever some weird stuff like that happens delete your user folder that's like the go-to response for just about any bug that happens out of the ordinary is delete your user folder. If it's not a known issue and it crops up all of a sudden out of nowhere and you go post on the forums, hey, what's this? Something's going on. People are probably going to tell you, hey, did you try deleting your user folder? Well, what's that? Okay, let me show you. So, back out to my computer. Here we go. I have a nice solid state drive entirely for Star Citizen. So find star citizen directory, go in here, citizen client, and this one right here, user folder. This contains all your user specific inventory, um, your uh, key binds, anything you change to the game, stuff like that. Um, important to note, if you delete your user folder, all of that gets reverted to their default values. But if you're not, if you're a screenshot fan, because your screenshots are saved in a different directory. So you're good to go on that one. So weird bugs, delete screenshot, uh, excuse me, delete user folder, not screenshot folder. Those are safe. And last but not least, actually probably most important, lobby tips and tricks, section 2.9. All right, so let's start with the first one. And I kind of want to spend most of my time on these tips, even though I've been rambling on for a while. Bear with me. It's for your benefit. So say you're in Arena Commander, you hit Escape, you go to the Arena Commander button, it boots up the game mode, you click Spectrum Match for multiplayer, and you want to go public, maybe invite some friends, go do a Battle Royale, whatever, you hit Launch, well, you didn't pick your ship that you loaded out, you have to select your ship, I want to fly the 350R, not the Anvil Hornet, so that's, eh. don't do that mistake. Okay, so I cycled my ship, that's good. Well, if I was just to click Battle Royale, Broken Moon, launch as is, I'd say there's probably a mm, 25% chance the game wouldn't load right. So, lobby tip number one, always cycle your ship, game mode, and map before launching every single time. So that just means do like this, hey, I'm not on Battle Royale anymore. Okay, I cycled the, map, the mode and the map. Went to the other map, Dying Star, and back to Broken Moon. Now I can hit launch, and pretty good chance I'll get into a game without any problems especially if I'm launching in single player. If you're launching in with multiple players, it can be a little trickier. A lot of times somebody gets dropped or doesn't make it into the game or crashes out 10 minutes into the game or whatever. It's an alpha. You have to kind of be able to deal with that sort of stuff. Okay, and in order to avoid some of those things with uh, large groups joining a game, lobby tip number two. If you're planning and playing as a large group, have everybody in your group relaunch their client at the same time equip their ships fresh and be ready to go as soon as they join the lobby so the way you invite somebody say I want to invite my buddy Bayor to the lobby okay he's lit up green dot I just click this invite button and he'll get a little message that pops up on his screen press J to accept or K to decline and if he hits J he'll jump right into this lobby with me and anybody else I invited that accepted and get them in quickly and launch the game quickly but make sure you select your right ship the host is the only one that has to worry about cycling the mode in the map. Alright, so suppose I invited Bayor but he wasn't ready or he hit K on accident and declined the lobby invite because he thought it was somebody else or he was just typing something and who knows, whatever. I don't want to have to leave the lobby, mess with all the game settings and everything just to refresh my player invites, which there is a way to do that. Either you normally would have to leave and make a new lobby so that your invite list would refresh and you could send again or you hit backspace that takes you back a menu you can hit backspace again and one more time all the way back to the hangar okay uh, at the very end of that tip very very important if you were to hit backspace and then try to go forward back into the lobby you would crash your game get a black screen and you're done you gotta forcibly close it and relaunch don't do that I warned you don't do it don't blame me. Oh, you told me about this, but it doesn't work right. It crashes my game. No, I warned you. Don't come crying. So backspace if nifty for uh, getting back to the hangar when you're still in a lobby. So you can come over here 
you can mess with your holo table. Oh, I forgot to put my shield on. Okay, click, get that, get back in the lobby quick. Or I need to invite so and so into my contact list and get them in the lobby. You can do that. Or I tried inviting somebody, but they missed it, and I need to refresh my invite list. You can do that. So I backspaced out. I'm still in the lobby. When I hit Arena Commander, bam, straight back to the lobby. Don't have to go through Spectrum, Match, Public, whatever to get here. It's just one click, and you're back in, ready to go. Okay. So, lobby tip number four, you sent an invite, well, sometimes people are offline that show online, some people are online that show offline, you don't know. You're talking to a buddy in comms, he says, hey, I'm online, send me an invite. You're like, I see Great Dot by your name, you're not online, I don't know. what do you do? Well, lobby tip number four, use the console. So, you hit the tilde key, this is what happens, you see this uh, console that tells you all different kind of commands and what the game's doing. Most of this is gibberish and hard to make any sense of, but there's a couple of things you can pay attention to. So, for example, I send an invite to Bayor. I hit my console. I check client send party invite to player status send OK. This lets me know that Bayor was online and he did receive the invite. Now, he might be in a match right now. Um, I'm not talking to him. I'm not saying, hey, let's play a game. I'm going to send you an invite, and he's expecting it or anything. So he might be in a match. He might be AFK, whatever. All I know is that that invite got to him. Now, the opposite of that is, let me pick this offline guy. Bam. Uh, player not online. So that's the other message to look for. They may be online, but if you send the invite and you get this message, they're not getting the invites properly, and they need to re-log before they can get an invite from you. So use the console to find out if invites are going through properly. Uh, other than that, you never know who's going to accept what and when, and it's possible to accept way later and come into a ghost lobby and somebody's sitting there trying to talk to you like, hey, what's going on? You want to play a match? And they'll see your name sitting here in lobby, but you're not actually there. It's weird. Alpha. All right, that's it for lobby tips. I'm actually going to exit out of here because I don't want to launch. So no point in backspacing out. Let's see. Let's check out holotable tip number one, which I can't show you the ill results of, nor do I want to. Or possibly, I just did something else that crashed the game. Okay, I'm froze up. I wonder if I'm still recording, hopefully. So holotable tip number one, there's a bug with the Sledge 2 mass drivers as of Arena Commander 103. If you try to put more than one on your ship, it's going to crash the game when you try to close the holo table. Uh, or if you're lucky enough to get past crashing at closing the holo table, you'll crash when you try to launch or load. And tip number two, um, dang, I wish the game was still launched. So when I first opened the holo table, there was a selection of things on the right. At the very top of that was this weird, almost mule or horse looking thing, almost like a sawhorse. And at the end of that, there is a gun and a gimbal mount attached to it. Just a little bonus thing. If uh, you happen to have an empty spot on your ship, empty hardpoint from some non-combat or starter variant, and you want to fill that with a weapon, you can go swipe a hardpoint and a weapon off of your test stand. So that's about it for course 099. Uh, covered as much as I can think of at the time that pertains to this level. There's a lot of things to think about constantly and juggle how I'm going to build them into the courses and well I'll do it as I can you know it's an alpha for me too with the flight school as well as the game being an alpha and lots of things are going to change and uh, hopefully you guys learned something so if you did great if you didn't well sorry for wasting your time you can fuss at me and then look for one of my later videos that's more suited to your skill level all right, later.